And all right, so today we're here with Wendy and Rob. These guys are <laughs> amazing um, scene without eyes practitioners, and I've just been a huge fan of them. And uh, yeah, just so excited to to um, you know. Um, ask them questions and like learn about seeing without eyes today. So, so um, Wendy and Rob, let's start with Wendy first. How did you get started with seeing without eyes? Oh, it's um, actually you could ask Rob first. Um, I met Rob um, what four years ago, around four years, and um, we were into some other stuff. And he just called me one day. Well, I'll let you tell the story, Rob, because it started with you. Okay, well, it actually goes back to a lady, the only app held in uh, Australia. Yeah, good friend. Yeah. Yeah, good friend. Uh, and uh, we were there for sky watching. You know, we do documentaries around UFOs. I had dramatic experiences when I was a kid. So we, we travel the world. You know, I've got a YouTube channel, Rob Freeman, UFO World Explorer. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. documentaries we've been around the world to like, oh gosh, 14 countries mm -hmm. over the last six wow. years. And, incredible stuff we've experienced but you know that's not the subject of today but that's how we met uh leone uh -huh. and uh when i got back we were there for three weeks she sent me this video of her grandson and granddaughter wearing the masks and they were playing hide and go seek they were playing games all while wearing a mask and doing different games and i thought it was a joke because, you know, Leone is a, a great gal. She's got a good sense of humor. And I thought she was doing a joke. But then, you know, this video went on for three minutes. And I thought, if this is a joke, this is quite elaborate. Why would she yeah. work into this? Like and they were, they were actually doing a treasure hunt, blindfolded, yeah. oh, wow. Re reading the cues and everything. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. So I said to Leone by text, I said, is this legit? Because if it is, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so... She wrote me back and she said, yes. And there's a teacher in Ottawa, Canada that, that teaches this to kids. And uh, here's her name and contact. So we called her up and it was right about that time I met Wendy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wendy, well, you can tell the rest of the story from there. Well, Rob called me and said, hey, you got to see this. And hey, do you want to come and take lessons? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm in, I'm, I'm in. So we basically, we went to Ottawa to, to take the course. Wow. And um, the funny part of it is um, at that course, it was a weekend course, right, Rob? And um, four days, and I saw nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so uh, except um, I uh, was sitting in the B&B &B that we stayed in, and I was, sitting, uh, I was sitting in a rocking chair with my mask on, and Liz, who was in our group, was um, training, they were practicing with Rob. Rob was laying on the couch and she was taking him through all the stuff we just learned. And so I'm in a rocking chair with my mask on, listening to them and not, you know, like just, just rocking, listening to them. Marcus, who was in part of the group too, was across the room. And unbeknownst to me, he just gets up, puts a colored piece of paper on my lap and says, what color is it? And it was boom, there it was. And it was fluorescent pink. I'll never forget that day. And uh, so, but it wasn't the trainer, it was Marcus, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> we've learned a lot after all these years, haven't we, about what's possible and what isn't, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, after that weekend, uh, the one girl in our group, Liz, she she got it right away. Yeah, I got so it yeah. just a little bit, Marcus got it a little bit, Yeah. Wendy at our Airbnb, and so when we got back, Wendy and I were talking and we said, we got to move this forward. So. We started practicing together. On our own, yeah. Yeah, I would go over to her place one day. She'd come over to mine. And we didn't really know what to do. We just dove into it. And it's kind of like uh, we want to do this. And we were experimenting different ways and are seeing open. Mm -hmm. And uh, fast forward to today, Wendy is at the point now, like, for example, today, she was seeing her hands. She was seeing some of the objects. In real time. In like real time. Um, you got to elaborate, Rob. Today we tried something new because I don't know if you've seen Graham's comments on our, on our web page or on our Facebook page. He's going, he was he doesn't believe. He's a scientist and he totally doesn't believe. And he told us to wear a full face covering to prove it to him. So today we did that. Yeah, we did. 
And so Rob wore a ski mask backwards and I wore a tube scarf and this was over our masks. Wow. Nice. And the incredible part about it is for me anyway, I was seeing in real time when I had the card, I'd come up like this. I could see my hand. I could see the card. I could see everything on it. That's with three layers of stuff covering my face. Wow. So it was, cool. it was just pretty wild today. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, okay. And, and typically, I'm usually a few weeks behind Wendy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like in public school. Girls are always ahead of the guys in school, right? <laughs> yeah. You did really good today, too, though. Yeah, still to this day. But I'm, I'm seeing in real time the odd time, but most of the time it's more like remote viewing locally. Nice. So okay. I've got my mask on. I can say what color it is. I can say the letter. I can say the symbol and all that. Right. It would be more like still uh, images, almost like uh, snapshots. Yeah. You know, where Wendy yeah. has taken it to the next level where she's seeing video. It's oh, real wow. time like motion. Real yeah, time. I'm seeing real. I'm seeing real time. It's 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 like seeing with your eyes only. It's like if you were blind, you could still see. It's it's like you see the color, you see the shape, you see the movement. It's like seeing with your eyes. It's just, I um, the other day I was practicing on my own and I was practicing and then all of a sudden I realized that everything below me I could see in true vivid color. I could see my lap, the chair and everything wow. below me. And I could see everything I put down here. I could see letters. I could see shapes all down here. And wow. you just never know. And at the stage we are, you never know when it's going to open, when it's going to close. It, it, it's coming everywhere for me right now. So. Very cool. Okay, okay. So yeah, very Wendy cool, guys. Awesome. So, Wendy and Rob, how many hours do you guys tra uh, pr practice this typically? Well, practicing is, you know, it's really up to the individual people in your schedule. Mm. Wendy and I, right now we're on a schedule of where we're getting together Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. That's and cool. then, for example, today is Wednesday, and I came to Wendy's place, and we started with me, so we actually practiced for an hour with me. Then we had lunch, went out for a walk, and then, or actually, no, right after lunch, Wendy, we practice with you and you yeah. did so well today it was only 30 minutes because bang 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 she got everything yeah so we'll do that schedule now for a while monday wednesdays and fridays now you know we also practice on our own at home when we can uh, I, I try to i try to do a few minutes on my own every day mm -hmm. even if it's just closing my eyes just close wow. my eyes and just try to get a shape or whatever. Right. I just, even if it's like five minutes, I try to do something every day. Yeah. I, I like I like how you guys actually uh, work as a, like a team kind of together, helping each other. That's the cool dynamic that I think a lot of people are not even fortunate enough usually unless they find the right people they can work with and if they're close enough to work with. That's that's right. super cool yeah. that you guys have that kind of dynamic. And what, what I love about Rob is he's got a wild imagination, so I never know what he's going to do to me. <laughs> well, safely. <laughs> safely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I remember one time I was in my living room, and I didn't know he was doing this. He went out into his car, and he's talking to me through, I don't know, did we have walkie-talkies? Walkie-talkies, yeah. Walkie-talkies. So he's out in the car, and he's putting cups on the dash of the car and saying, what color are the cups? I didn't know where he was. So I would say the color of the cup, and then he started backing out the driveway and started driving down the road, and I had no clue he was doing that. Hmm. And then asking me what the cup, cups, color of the cups were as he's driving down the road. Like, yeah, he comes up with some... Pretty wild stuff. Yeah, that's pretty I cool. Way, I went all the way to the beach. Yeah. Because we didn't know if this was just local right near you or it would work long distance. Yeah. So I didn't say a word to her. Wow. While I was in the driveway, just, you know, literally 20 feet away from her. So in her mind, of course, it's going to work, right? <laughs> so I quietly pulled away and, and drove all the way down the road to the beach uh, on Lake Huron. And I was asking her and she was getting the colors. Yeah. And then after I got back, I showed her the video. She could see me pulling, you know, I had my camera playing and uh, she couldn't believe. And so we knew, we, one by one, we found out that really 
what we were doing was remote viewing. And it's, mm. local, and it's non-local. It's non-local. And, yeah. And then, you know, at one point, you know, in the other room, Wendy was getting stuff that was sitting on a laptop behind a closed door in the other room. Yeah. It just went there. Her vision went there. It's like uh, there, there was one there. day. We, one thing we've learned: this gets very bored very fast. Yeah. So there was one day he was bringing stuff to me, and I'm sitting in the living room, and I'm I'm trying to get colors and everything, and then he walked away. And seriously, my consciousness, my vision, just went into the other room, <laughs> and he came, and I could visually see myself doing that. And I started to laugh and I said to Rob, my vision just went into the other room and he just laughed and he goes, okay. He went into the other room and started handing up stuff and everything and I got bang, 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 I got them all. It's nice, wow. nice. Yeah. Um, one, one day, Rob, so, you know, generally speaking, when people uh, teach remote viewing, they'll write down those ideograms and like uh, numbers and stuff like that. You guys don't do any of that stuff at all. Like that's that's um, the beauty of what you guys are doing with seeing without eyes. Like you know. I I have done remote viewing, whereas um, well, one of the one I remote view, I put things in envelopes because I actually took a course to remote view where they put numbers and everything on it, mm -hmm. and I took the course. I got nothing. Okay. So anyway, then I came home and I talked to somebody and they said to me, because of the way you are, that's actually detrimental to you. Oh. Um, and that um, a lot of remote viewers only see part of the picture or part of the destination or part of the object. Mm -hmm. Whereas with me, um, when I have an envelope with a picture in it, I just put the picture up and then I get the full picture. I'm like, boom, nice. the whole thing. So they said to me, don't, don't try to do it the way they're doing it because it's actually detrimental to you because you okay, okay. get totally different. Um, one time, Rob, we were practicing by Skype and Rob was at his house and he directed me over to his house and then up to this room where he was practicing and he gets up and he said, come up the stairs, come into my room, and I'm walking across to the window. What color is the sheet of paper in my hand? And I actually saw him walk across the room. And when he got to the window, I saw the colored piece of paper and it was orange. And I said to him, is it orange? And he goes, yeah. Wow. So then when he played the video back, that's exactly what I saw. Nice, very uh, cool. Okay, okay. So, so what, uh, sorry, um, were you gonna say something wrong? No, no, that's good. Yeah, I was gonna say, so basically, what this seems to be is an advanced form of remote viewing. Nice, taking it to the next level past, right? Everything Wendy and I went through was like remote viewing, only I never took any courses on remote viewing, we mm -hmm. just practiced on our own and believed we yeah. could do it, and it all, it all started to happen right over time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but then at some point it starts to change where you actually see things in real time i mean children can open in a day or even yeah. just an hour right you know, they can, right they can read books with blindfolds on they can drive go carts there's a video that we have where our friend leone uh from australia her grandson is driving a car on a private property on their yard with his mask on, he's yeah. what, 14 years old? I'm 13, he's playing video games with his mask on. His right. sister, yeah, I saw that on your channel, his yeah. Sister and, his sister and him were playing a game against each other blindfolded, yeah. Right, right, that's excellent. That's super cool. Yeah. Right, cool. right, that's excellent. So, so Wendy and Rob, so um, do you get, so is, pretty much like the brain enhancement type of exercises all you guys do, you guys don't do like, you know, uh, a means actually, um, uh, he practiced Qigong heavily and stuff like that and Tai Chi and things like that um, to develop his consciousness. Um, do you guys do any kind of yoga or Tai Chi or Qigong or anything like that at all? Do, um, or do you guys pretty much focus on just the brain, right brain? I, I do uh, meditate. I uh, Myself, I actually, we actually just started meditating almost, I, I almost every day for okay. half to three quarters of an hour. I do a little bit of yoga, but not a lot. Um, okay. Um, but I'm kind of like Rob too. It's like, I have, I have had ET experiences also. So I'm not sure like consciousness 
experiences. So I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. We, we've just been experimenting. So, yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. So what is your guys' goal? Um, you know, do, do you guys want to get, this? it sounds to me like you guys are getting to the point where you guys can like, you know, instantly remote, maybe, maybe not perhaps instant, but um, you guys can, you know, basically close your eyes and can do remote view instead of like, you know, drawing things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that your guys' goal to just be able to get the point where you guys can like, you know, just see anything and, and uh, you know, past, present, future, and things like that, just yeah. help, you, help you instantly? It's really, we want to be able to read in real time. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, if we take a book in our hand or, you know, on the computer, you can just read with your eyes closed or blindfold on. That's that's what the goal is. But, okay. you know, this will lead into many things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is something that everybody is born with. Yeah, everybody can do it. You guys right. can do the same thing. And I've, I've actually, you know, I have a lot of friends and, been on different expeditions for other stuff and you know sometimes there's spare time and my friends know that i do this and you know one guy charles lambert i said uh, you want to try the scene blindfolded and he was skeptical he just humored me he didn't think it was legit he puts the blindfold on and i just take him through a couple relaxation exercises and then i start putting up colors and he was getting them i didn't tell him i was recording him okay so uh -huh. You know, we went through maybe 30 minutes and then uh, I said, okay, lift your mask for the very last one. He says, oh, you're recording me. And then, you know, I, I showed him the video afterwards and he was blown away because he wow. got everything right on his very I bet you, I bet you that was a cool expression on his face, huh? <laughs> it was. For many people, I mean, when you do it, you're kind of in the moment. So a lot of times- You don't remember, you don't remember it. You don't even remember how well you did. No. Uh, unfortunately, it's <laughs> to concentrate on our mistakes way too much. And so if you get one or two things wrong, that's all you're going to remember. You forgot about the 18 things that you just got right, you know. Yeah. So that's why I always do a video and then I, you know, edit it down. And it's reinforcement for the people to see that, yes, you're actually doing this. It's actually working. You are actually seeing with closed eyes with a blindfold on it's pretty incredible but it's it's a natural ability we all have we just haven't used it most people don't even know they have it yeah um there was times when rob and i had trained together and he'd he'd leave totally bummed because all he could remember was the bat that he didn't get stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> he'd get home and i'm texting him and he's like oh i don't think i'll i'll give this up i didn't get much and i'm texting him do the video do the video because he, he's the he's the video guy. He's taught me. I'm doing my own now, but it's like do the video, do the video, do the video. So he finally did, and he's like, "Whoa, I don't remember that at all." So that's that's why we do it up for people so that they get confirmation of what they actually did do. Yeah, that's a great technique. That's good. That's a good way to practice. You guys are very creative with it, and you guys are very smart about how you guys approach this stuff. I can just see you guys getting better, better, very fast, very soon. Like with going be up beyond your goals yeah to take you further you're in your right brain yeah. so it's kind of like a lot of the times you don't remember exactly what you're doing i wouldn't say you're in a trance you're not in a trance but you're very mm -hmm. much in your right brain versus your left brain where you know logical reasoning all that kind of stuff so right most <clears throat> Other cool stuff happens too, though. There's been multiple times where, uh, and one time in particular, I was doing laundry, which is downstairs. Couldn't find my phone. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? So I searched all over for my phone. But why at that moment did I want my phone? But anyway, I searched all over it. I finally found it. I put my hand on it and it started ringing and it was Rob. <laughs> you know, like we've had tons of that kind of stuff happen, haven't we? Wow, fascinating. <laughs> so speaking of that, um, can you, I mean, I, I I saw Wendy do spoon bending on YouTube. Yeah. Can you guys perform any other metaphysical abilities on our channel primarily? Um, you know, m most of our listeners and um subscribers and stuff, uh, we practice telekinesis mainly. I mean, I mean, yeah. a very well-known telekinesis practitioner and so am I. Um, do you guys practice like any other metaphysical abilities besides seeing without eyes and remote viewing? Um, I, I've done the spoon bending thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, we've been predominantly, well, since we've been taking on students too, 
Um, mm -hmm. I've kind of given that up, but I have a friend, I don't know if you know him, Alien Protocols, Buddy Bolton. And um, he said to me, once you get past three or four spoons, like everybody can do one. Mm -hmm. Some people can do two, but if you get up to three or four, then you're actually, you're going to be able to do it. And he said to me, get a screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm sorry. Just, just, just to clarify. So what do you mean by two or three? Like, you know, like two. No, no, no. Uh, if you can, like, if you can do two or three in a row, like. Oh, in a row. Okay. You can do one. Then later on, they can do two. Um, but if you can do more than that, then you do have the energy that you can put towards it. Yeah, you can't without it exhausting you either. You know, like yeah. you have enough the energy to do that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So he told me to, um, and a lot of people poo poo the the spoon bending, mm -hmm. but um, anybody that's never done it doesn't understand this part because they say, oh, anybody can bend a spoon with the strength. Anybody right, can do that. Right. The day the video that Rob did with me is I drove to London to pick up a parcel and I had no idea we was going to do this. I got into the passenger side and he handed me a spoon and said, bend it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and wow. he's, of course, with his phone, video, he videotapes everything. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And he, and so he said, try, it doesn't matter. And what people don't understand is that I use no force whatsoever. That spoon wow. turned, turned to putty. It just turned to putty. And I was like, I was even surprised. I bent it and it was like it turned to putty and it just bent on its own. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, I mean, pretty much seeing without practicing, seeing without eyes, like naturally kind of unlock this ability. You guys didn't even, you know, uh, it's it's not like you said, you know, like I'm gonna practice telekinesis, spoon bending, anything like that. You just decided to just like just, do it one day. And I just, just decided it. to do it, and I'm actually right now trying to do some more telekinesis. But I find with our training, it takes when I train people, they tell me they can feel my energy. Leone in particular, she says that she says when she doesn't see as well, except when I train her. She said she can feel me sending my energy to her. So when we practice so much, some days I feel totally drained. Mm. So uh, so I'm really trying to build up the energy to do the telekinesis thing too. I have it set up here and and um, just haven't had the time to do it. So well, when you say you have it set up, do you, do you mean like a sawi or do you mean like a spoon bending? Not uh, no, not the spoon bending. I have the where the cup and the pin and the tin. Oh, fork. okay, yeah, yeah. That's that's what we do. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm doing it. Leone can do that. All she has to do is walk by and look at it, and it starts oh. spinning. Oh, and, oh, and I said, "Well, I'm having trouble with that." And she says, "Well, you're training a lot. You're giving out your energy." She said, um, "She said oh, you should be able to do it." So anyway, right, right, right. I mean, you, you guys know Sean McNamara, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. I you know I I'm an uh, affiliate for his uh, courses and stuff like that. And oh, okay. you know, yeah, and and it's it's interesting because you know um I means my teacher and like he predominantly taught me to push chi. He's a qigong guy. He's a qigong yeah. master, and he predominantly taught me to just push chi and stuff like that. And Sean's um the way Sean does it is different. Sean uh you know you know feels the the paper or the foil yeah. and stuff like that and try to influence it that way and stuff like that and for me i personally um started out doing it sean's way but i got eventually better doing it a means way which is basically just you know pushing chi and stuff like that and so okay. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's really interesting mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah we, we haven't got into that too much i just i just took it upon myself one day to try it and uh, was was just shocked when I did it, especially the day that Rob had me do it in his car. And um, so, you know, like we we aren't professionally trained in anything, are we, Rob? <laughs> no. And uh, Ken will also mention one of the fellows I'm training. I won't mention his name for privacy reasons because the last time he did a video and showed this, he had thousands of emails and phone calls. So, um, but. He did a demo for me, and I've got it on video. Wendy has seen it, but I, I have. can't share it with anybody, but it's legit. He took a light bulb, and he put his finger on the bottom and then touched the other part of the metal. And with tin foil. He had tin foil on his fingers. He put tin foil on his fingers because it makes a better connection, and he made the light bulb go on. Nice. That's really and, cool. 
And I said, well, you know, maybe turn the room, the, the light down in your room. So he did his breathing thing and he went something like that. And I watched the light go off in his room. Nice, nice. Um, I mean, I have a question in regards to that. So, so when the Rob, um, we typically call that electrokinesis in our industry. It's not, it's not something that I personally ever uh, experience experimented with. But I do have a few friends that actually can do that. Um, I'm, 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 I'm in, so that that's considered Yang energy. Am I correct? Well, well any, anything that projects outside of yourself is a combination of both Yin and Yang. Uh, yang is usually contained on the inside. Yin is usually on the outside. But okay, when you okay. know the difference and how they interact, mm -hmm. to be able to push your Yang beyond your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the Yin goes, the Yang can follow. You know? oh, oh, okay. okay. So, you know, maybe that's what we're doing with the blindfold scene because it's almost like it's your consciousness. Oh, sorry, yeah. guys. It's nothing to do with your eyes at all. You're seeing from within side, but you're seeing from a point outside of your body. For example, uh, three or four weeks ago, we were practicing at my place. And all of a sudden, my vision opened up. And I looked at the image and what I was seeing. I thought, now, where am I seeing that from? And my feet were on a footstool. And I thought, the only place I could see at that angle is from my footstool. So somehow my vision was at a point of view from my feet. It's kind of like, and that's an external thing. I mean, you're sending your consciousness out, whether uh, consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. It's got to be very similar to people that have these, you know, near-death experiences where, you know, they see their body on the table for surgery and they're up at the ceiling looking down. I mean, how many stories have we heard like that where they hear everything that's said in the room, they see everything that's going on? Well, that's not their body. They're sending their consciousness, consciousness or their yeah. energy or, you know, um, and one of the energies you're talking about, they're, they're sending it either consciously or unconsciously to the mm -hmm. ceiling and they're seeing from that point of, view. point of view. What we're doing is no different. Yeah, what we're seeing from well here, said. just outside our, you know, outside our body, outside our head, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever, um, I'm sure you've experienced it because of what you guys are practicing already, is but like outer body or, or astral projection or something. I don't know if you guys have, have ever experienced, but what you were just saying with um, consciousness, one of, the, one of the first times I remember when I astral projected and I was coming back in my body, it was as if it was in a different angle than where my consciousness should have really been at. And I was like kind of seeing both like with my eyes and not my eyes, but it was like my yeah. my feet were where my head was supposed to be. Like where it was kind of, it's like kind of weird. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I was going to ask you that uh, to, to you guys as well, Wendy and Rob. Um, do, So, you know, I, I was speaking to a remote viewing guy one time and he was telling me that he essentially considers remote viewing and astral projection essentially the same thing. Um, do, do you guys kind of see that see it that way at all uh, as well? No, um, uh, I have astral projected too, and you actually, in my case, you actually go. Uh, well, I would say I astral projected the day I saw the orange sheet at your house, um, but I have astral projected to a friend's place in Romania, and actually described. I've never been there before, and the next morning I described how she was laying, what she was wearing, what was on, because it was a time difference. So she was asleep and I described the pillow and the blanket and everything in her apartment. And so, but I, I physically went out of my body. What remote viewing is, you actually see the image, right, Rob? You actually see, see the image here. Um, but I think I astral projected the day I went to your house, so. Yeah, I know that several times, like I say, for me, it feels like your consciousness is at a point, like a point, and it's going, and wherever that point is, is your point of view. But more than once, when I'm in the mask and getting relaxed, I'll have an entire image open up mm -hmm. of my face. Oh, yeah. I'll see my face, or I'll see a close-up of my eyes, and I'll say, oh, yeah. my God, that's me. Yeah. And it's like my consciousness has gone right to this point here and is looking back at me. Yeah. Right? I've had that a lot. I don't know about you, Wendy. Have you had that? I, I've never had that, but I've known yes. you. I've heard you experience that, yeah. 
Yes. Actually, I, I see that every time I sit down to meditate within a few few uh, minutes, it's definitely the way I, the for one of the first things I start seeing, you know, yeah. is and, like yeah. my own face <laughs> kind of it's almost eyes, like yeah. spotlight. It's almost like a little spotlight where yeah. okay, where do you want to aim the beam at? Yeah. Well do you want to aim it in front of you and see the room, or do you want to take that uh spotlight over to your friend's place in Romania, Wendy, and yeah, showing yeah. it around there. Yeah. Rob actually when when um when I do a relaxation with Rob um i'll i'll send him like i'll just describe tell him to go different places and stuff it's like a story you'd tell a child and they take themselves to that area and he gets a purple he calls them his purple swirl yeah. and it's like a purple tunnel out front right yep. and he has actually seen things through the middle of that purple circle I've never had that. He actually, one time it opened up and he saw the room through that tunnel, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And so he gets that quite often. Yeah. I wonder if it's a male thing because I also get that too. Oh. <laughs> it very well could be. It very well could be. I don't, ne I've never seen it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just being funny. But no, but I, I do see that. I like, I don't know if it's exactly the same as you're describing it, but I, I get this what will start as like a purplish turn, like almost like it's greenish, even gold, and it can turn bright white also like a sun it can if it's like um not a total circle it'll eventually form into a very strong circle and then in and itself you can see like scenes yeah like like pop up in it it's pretty yeah. interesting yeah. so almond when you get that say to yourself i can see through that and if you actually just in your mind try to open that up you mm -hmm. can see in real time yeah. i'll try that to the yeah, room in front of you. yeah. Yep. Yeah, it sounds cool. It is. It is. It's my at, at times as the years have gone on, I'm just it blows my mind sometimes of what I see. Uh, there was one time in particular we were doing it by Skype, and Rob handed or put up a picture on the screen, and said, "What am I? What do you see? What am I holding?" And I kept saying to him, "I I see a lion." I can see the ears, I can see the eyes, I can see the stripes, I can see everything. And he goes, well, it's not a lion. So then he showed me later on, and it was a butterfly, but the top of the wings was the ears. The lines were the lines of the, of the wings, and it had spots on the wings, which were the eyes. So my left brain or right brain or whatever was trying to interpret that picture to me. And all I kept seeing was a, was a lion with the stripes and everything. And that, that kind of thing just blows my mind. It just keeps me at this because I just, I'm fascinated with what I get some days, you know, it's pretty incredible. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. I'm um, so cool. Wendy, or, so Wendy and Rob. Um, I've heard from the grapevine that um, so th so there's four primary uh, institutions that teach very expensive uh, that teach mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and there are seminars that are very expensive. So we're really grateful that you're teaching uh, this stuff for free. Um, yeah. Thanks, Rob and Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So so I've heard from the grapevine that you know within this in institutions there there are people that can essentially that that, that 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 have essentially achieved the state of all knowing meaning that they can like you know essentially just do this remote viewing um instantly type type thing and they can see the future they can see the past mm -hmm. things like that H have you heard of that rumor yeah, yeah. we've before? experienced some of that too because yeah. not only can you send this i'll call it a little tiny sphere or pinpoint you know out in front of you or to other rooms you can send it ahead in time. Yeah. You can send it back in time. Now, Wendy and I have experimented a little bit with that, where we I put a card in a room and then I mark down the time and then I've taken it away. And I say, okay, Wendy, go back 10 minutes ago at exactly this time period and tell me the symbol that was on that card. And she gets it. Or we've gone to the future. So you know, those are all interesting things, but you know, at our age, we're yeah. just 
all we want to do is be able to read books blindfolded. <laughs> yeah, the, the younger you are, the easier the easier it is. And I and we've come to the conclusion that's because as you get older, um, you have more stuff. Your left brain keeps trying to kick in there, trying to say you got to do this, you got to go there, you got you know, and it and it it's harder. I. I uh, you explain it, Rob. It's harder for us to shut it off. Yeah. Yeah, because this ability exists in the, they say that it exists in the right brain, you know, more in the creative side. Yeah. And you've got your left brain, which is, you know, analytical, logical. It's where your ego is. So, you know, in today's world, you know, you've got to earn money. You've got responsibilities. You've got to, you know, look after the kids, go shopping, bring money. You've got to work. You've got to look after your clients. Much of that is left brain activity, okay? And you still got a right brain, but it's like the left brain is the big bully. Yeah. And it's where the ego is, and it doesn't have time or any room for anything of the right brain. And so as you get older, the, the left brain is more deeply entrenched. Yeah. As a kid, they're mostly in their right brain. They yeah. don't know what logic and reasoning even is. Kids just accept everything. The older you get, the less you accept or the less you believe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So basically, what you, as you get older and older, you know, you're more entrenched in that left brain thinking, you know, task oriented, mm -hmm. um, just ego, you know, literally forcing your way through, taking control of everything and making things happen. Mm -hmm. The ability is totally the opposite of that. You got to let go of your left brain. You got to be a passive let observer. Go. You got to let go of your ego. You got to let go of judgment, like self judgment, self criticism, yeah. uh, all of that stuff. You got to just let it go because it just gets in the way and it blocks it. Mm -hmm. And I always use the example it's kind of like if you and I went to a rock concert and, I, you know, I get a text and it's about you, and I'm kind of shouting into your ear to tell you there's an emergency. Your sister is texting me. You won't even hear me because of the rock concert going on. Now, as soon as the rock concert stops, you'd smack me in the face and say, stop yelling in my ear. <laughs> I didn't change my tone. So it's kind of like the left brain, you got to turn all this loud music down, all this noise down, and then you can hear all the subtle stuff coming from your right brain. It's always there. Mm -hmm. But the problem is in our everyday busy lives, We've got so much stuff happening in our left brain that we completely override the right brain. And, you know, in our practice, we do many things to distract the left brain. It's kind of like, look over here, you know? Yeah. Uh, and as soon as you can distract it, the information will come right through from your right brain. And Wendy was distracting me today. <laughs> but, you know, she had a ball in one hand, a card in another, and then she took one of the little plastic balls and, Threw it at I started throwing them at him. <laughs> so immediately your left brain is like, well, what's going on? I got to protect myself. Or what's this all about? Yeah. And also started to laugh. Also started to laugh. Yeah. And immediately I got everything because yeah. that was the chance that the right brain could slip this information in. Yeah. That's cool. When the left brain was distracted and engaged over here. Mm -hmm. So, and, and as Wendy says, if you can laugh, and we, yeah. we always try. And the harder it. you laugh, the harder you laugh, the more it just comes right in. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. laughing is completely from the right brain. Yeah. No, I've seen right. so many times where, as soon as you know something funny happens, the instant you have that thought that it's funny, boom! You'll see the image, you'll see the letter, you'll see the symbol. So we're always trying to have fun, laugh, feel good about it because. All of those good feelings that you carry connect you to your yeah. right brain. If you're preoccupied, if you've got stuff on your mind, you know, oh, I got to do this after, and oh, what about, you know, her? I got to call her. Anything that preoccupies you will just put a wall up, and it's very difficult to do. I think my favorite, my absolute favorite, and, you know, and the video is on there. I was falling down laughing. Because Rob couldn't get a thing. I don't know what was going on in his head, but he couldn't get anything. And I'm like, and as a trainer, you're like, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So I just walked up and I flicked him on the forehead. And it was like, whoops, that was a little hard. But I flicked him on the forehead. And then I went, oh, my God, started to laugh hysterically. 
And he started laughing and he got everything after that. Wow. Everything. So it was like, whoa, you know, and then we both, and I couldn't shut up. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. So when the Arab, like, you know, my, my girlfriend, she, I, I, th I think she practiced for about a month or so and stuff like that. And she really couldn't improve. You know, she practiced for hours and hours and hours. What, what would you, well, you know, and, and I've, I've met a few people that really had a hard time getting results as well. What, what would your advice be to those people that are having a hard time um, getting results and seeing stuff? Yeah, what, what it, you like, like you said, smiling and like just having fun. It's yeah. difficult right now, depending on where you live, like here in London, Ontario, and Wendy lives an hour north. We're on lockdown. We're in home. We're right home. Yeah. The ICUs are, are overflowing, and so we're on lockdown. So normally, people are not allowed to even get together. But Wendy lives singly, and so she's allowed to be part of my bubble. Anyway, bottom line is we're able to get together physically. We're actually together now. I'm just in another room. For the, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We're in the same house right now. Yeah. But my, my the strongest recommendation would be if get she a can get a physical practice partner. Oh okay. because then it becomes very three dimensional and real. Outside you know, of yourself. Yeah. You're not isolated on the other side of a screen and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very flat, right? Yeah. So number one, try to get a, a practice partner that a person mm -hmm. that can come yeah. and be with you. Mm -hmm. If it's not possible. With things like you know lockdowns with COVID right now, you know that's going to end soon. But uh, at least get an online partner. I've got three people I'm practicing with right now who we're doing it online. So I'm directing them. They've got their mask on, and I'm oh, cool. you know I've got cups and colors and shapes and symbols mm -hmm. and letters. They've also got the stuff at their end. So I'll get them to reach forward, grab a pile of colored cups, shuffle them, and then have them grab one randomly and then they, you know, I can see what color it is and then I get them to look for it and hold letters up and all that. So number one, together physically is best. There's no doubt. That's why we're together today. Number two, online is next. But they really want to practice, I would say, three times a week minimum, Wendy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? So, so yeah. practicing this every single day is not necessarily a good thing in your guys' view? Um, what would you say, Rob? <laughs> well, sometimes when you let it go for a bit and then you come back and approach it from a different mm -hmm. angle, it's good. Yeah. Like anything I, else. Um, the, first <laughs> part of the, the first part of the pandemic, we were practicing, wasn't it online every day? Yeah. And then I actually went over and stayed at Rob's place and we practiced in person every day. But you got to realize we've been practicing for a long time. Mm -hmm. But um, I think in my case, um, I was overdoing it because I started going backwards. Oh, okay. So I just kind of went, um, okay, enough. And I quit. Um, I think for three weeks. I didn't touch it for three weeks. Then one night I went out and I went out for a nice walk. I met a girlfriend and we chatted and we just, you know, like I hadn't seen anybody for a long time other than Rob. So we decided to have a glass of wine and go out for a walk and all this kind of stuff. So I came back feeling really, really good, really happy. I walked in and I went, oh, I think I'll practice. So I sat down and I opened up wide. I could see everything. I could see the room. I could see everything that I held up. And it lasted for three hours. Nice. Okay. And I walked out to the kitchen, made a cup of coffee, came back in, sat down. It was still wide open. Wow. And it was, it's like if you were, it would be, it's the same instances. If you were blind, you would see like a normal person. That's the way it was. I had my eyes closed and I could see everything like a, like a normal person. Right, cool. right. I, I want to ask uh, Amin a question real quick. So, what is your take on that? So, you know, obviously, I've read some of your Qigong books when I was living with you, and uh, you know, it stated that you know, um, after you practice Qigong after a while, it, it, you know, you can get to the point where you can unlock telekinesis, levitation, um, you know, remote view naturally, and stuff like that. Um, you know, in, in in your view, like you know, it, it, do you think there's a way to cultivate? this sort of energy that naturally opens your third eye, perhaps. Um, what, what is your take on that? Um, well, the body is, um, 
this is all natural to the body mm-hmm. and and we're uh, we're like a uh, people pe- like think of a person who doesn't know <clears throat> how to like fix their own car or not mm-hmm. not a mechanic right but if you were a mechanic you'd have a totally different view of the of the body you know the car mm-hmm. huh? yeah. like when we're practicing and learning about our energy and how the energy moves through our body and we learn what that subtle energy feels like and we're building on it. it's kind of like a mechanic knowing what he's doing with his car but just like kind of building the car nicely up and mm-hmm. taking good care of it and you know mm-hmm. So it's there's there is an energy that you can build up through doing stuff like qigong, but mainly what were they really doing? It's just talent, like you're just learning how to get your body back in enlightenment, so energy can flow naturally the way it does. Anyways, you know, when we're when we're used to sitting behind a TV or a computer or looking down our cell phones, our energy, you know, is, is not necessarily proper. Like when you're ha- having good posture and and mm-hmm. you know our organs hang a certain way when we're the right way or if we're crunched over so oxygen is also different all this stuff is happening you know so we're just right. doing simple stuff to to realign ourselves and this energy builds up this way i guess that's the answer to your question yeah right right um one thing rob i mean in, in your guys's youtube description there's a link to the uh, the wim hof the wim hof uh breeding. breeding i do that yeah so you guys do the cold shower and stuff like that as well do you think that helps uh, develop disability or i i started the wim hof because i have asthma and I, oh, okay. I and I actually started it to help this, but then I um, I saw an interview with him, and he said it helps so much more. So I started, and I have right now. I can hold my, as an asthmatic, I can hold my breath for a minute and a half, and I have been able to hold it up to two minutes as an asthmatic. I think that's, that's pretty good. cool. Very cool. Just practicing it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and how long have you been doing the, the Wim Hof for? Um, I wasn't doing it for very long. It didn't take very long to get to that point. I think mainly with asthma, it's just breathing properly, taking the full breaths and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, and also, I listen to his music. So if I get it, it's the same thing as the scene. If I get into my head what's going on during the day, I can't hold it. If I ter- take myself out and listen to his music and let it all go, I don't have to breathe. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So we'll probably ask one more question and wrap this up. Um, uh, so Wendy and Rob, so, you know, what is your guys' goal as far as like your uh, social media presence goes and stuff like that? Obviously your, your Facebook group is like, you know, steadily growing and stuff like that. You guys are, um, you know, you know, gradually getting your names out there because you guys upload videos a lot on YouTube. Do you guys want to be, you know, perhaps a spiritual teacher in the in the future, um, an instructor for this stuff? Like, what is your guys' goal as far as your okay. journey goes? My view is, you know, here we are in our 60s, and if we can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah. Okay. Now, they're not doing it. Why not? Well, they don't know how to do it. They don't even know about it. So, Really, what this is all about is it's Wendy and my personal journey. And everything's documented from when we first started on YouTube there. So people can watch how we've advanced over the months and even the years. Yeah, and we've actually had interview talk, but we tried to do some interviews where we're just talking back and forth like this. Um, trying to give people ideas and stuff. Our big, I think our biggest thing is, is when we started, the courses for this are phenomenally expensive. Mm -hmm. And they all try to keep all their secrets. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they make you in some places make you sign a NDA. Right. Whereas we're like, that shouldn't be happening. Everybody should know about this. Everybody mm-hmm. should be shown how to do this. Everybody should know about it. How many right. people have we had say what? You know, and and we're and like look at our age. Like if we can do it and we can focus on it and we can make it happen. And the younger you are, the easier. You know, and there's so many other things that come with it. Like That's you. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Amin and I can definitely relate to that vision as well. I mean, we do sell products. You know, I, I sell Sean McNamara's products and stuff like that. But, you know, and Amin sells his own. But but really, at the end of the day, we do share all our knowledge for free. We don't hold anything back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just buying our courses, just supporting our channel and stuff like that. So, yeah, mm-hmm. we totally resonate. Absolutely right, Amin. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, we we resonate with that one hundred percent. And uh, yeah, we're not we're not holding anything back. You know, we teach everything pretty much. You can find me repeating myself for years yeah. Yeah, uh, on yeah. the channel. But we, yeah. we, have a, we have a lot of teachers mad at us. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, certainly. I can, I can they, a lot of them aren't happy with us, are they? But on the other side of it, Rob did this. And the other side of it, we list all their channels and we list their links. And, yeah. you know, and if people want to go and do that, they're all there. And right. so if someone uh -huh. comes to us and says, hey, you're taking our business. We say, no, we're advertising for you. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we, 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 we do the kind of same thing with we just try to give everybody credit due where it's deserved and whoever's into it, what they are. We, yeah. We're out there. Hey, share, share. We'll share you. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Let's keep this. Let's keep this community alive and grow it. Like mm -hmm. the more, the the merrier. You know. And we had a bunch of people. Rob was hoping people would get online and and start training each other, and then videotape themselves, and we'd even edit them and that. And people were so shy about doing that. So then we went, okay, we'll train a few people online and share it. So that's what we're doing right now. I'm doing three, and I think Rob's doing three at this point. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Well, guys, um, you know, we'll probably wrap this up. We will put a Wendy and Rob's uh, channel as well as Facebook group in the description. And um, yeah, definitely check it out there. It's it's a phenomenal group. A lot of training prep, uh, prep, uh, partners you can yeah. um, find and stuff like that. And just a lot of like minded. And what's blowing my mind is I went through all of our members and they're from all over the world. I, there's days I'm saying to Rob, how are they finding out about us? You know, because we have Argentina. We wait. Some countries I've never heard of. I, we have members, so it's it's. I, I'm loving that part of it. Yeah, yeah it's very awesome. cool. Thank awesome. you so okay. much, guys. And real quick question: I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> oh, you right. could get a copy of this to put. Oh on yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh absolutely. yeah, that would be great. Could and, I? Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll send it to Wendy. Wendy. Well, right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Rob, and thank you, Wendy. You guys are awesome. It's, thank you. Is, thank I had a you fun time. Having. Nice yeah. after. I had a good yeah. afternoon nice so far. You. That's, yeah. so, that's super. And I'd love to learn energy more than I can. Like, wow. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Thank awesome. Thanks so much, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. See you guys. Yeah. Bye. How do I sign off?